Today we are going to talk about firewalls. They are one of those things that almost everyone who is using a desktop or laptop computer has heard of, but not many people seem to actually know what they do. This video should change that. The simplest explanation is that a firewall prevents unauthorized access to a network. It allows traffic from the internet that is wanted, and then it prevents unwanted traffic, sort of like a bouncer at a nightclub. But what is the technology that is at play here? How exactly does a firewall figure out what traffic is wanted and what traffic is not wanted? To understand this, we first have to take a look at network ports, or protocols. A network port is a logical construct but functions much like the physical ports on your computer, USB, HDMI, DisplayPort, etc. Each port has a designated purpose. For example, port 80 is the HTTP port that is used for web traffic, port 22 is the SSH port that is used for secure shells. There are a total of 65,535 network ports that a computer can use, many of which have specific purposes, but chances are you aren't actually using anywhere near all of those ports. For example, a typical computer user that just wants to browse the web probably doesn't need to use SSH since it's an unnecessary protocol for that user. They just want to browse the web. And as a result, the network administrator might see that it's a good idea to block any SSH traffic to that user, as well as some other stuff using firewall rules. So let's take a look at some of these firewall rules. They might look slightly different than this, depending on what type of firewall you are using, but all firewalls pretty much follow the same concept. So from left to right, we have permission, which is just going to be allow or deny. Then we have the IP address. This is the source address. So the IP of whatever machine or whatever service is out there on the internet sending the traffic to a machine on your network. Then you have the protocol. This is gonna be either TCP or UDP. And technically, any ports can be used over TCP or UDP. The difference being that TCP is a stateful connection, which means every packet is going to be accounted for, everything is going to come through correctly and in the correct order, but as a result of all these checks, the connection is usually a little bit slower. And with UDP, you have a much faster connection, but things are less reliable. You would see UDP being used in things like voice over IP because you just need the sound to come through. It's okay if a few packets are dropped. That's why if you ever use voice over IP, you might notice that sometimes a person's voice goes a little bit robotic. But that's fine, right, as long as most of it gets through. But you typically wouldn't use UDP for something like a file transfer because there's a good chance, especially if you're transferring a large file, that things would get out of order and then the file would become corrupted. Then we have the destination address. So this is the IP address of the machine that is actually on your network that the traffic is going to be sent to. And then finally, we have the port. So this is the type of connection that is being established. And the order of these rules is also very important because fire rule, firewall rules are processed from first to last. So for example, on the seventh line here, I have a firewall rule that is essentially blocking all HTTP traffic from all websites to all of the hosts that are on the network. And if you wanted to whitelist specific sites, like you would do on a school network, because obviously you don't want the students just willy-nilly going to any site there on the internet, uh, you would basically whitelist all of the sites that you wanted above here, like you would allow, and then have the IP address or the domain and then of course port 80 since it's web traffic. So you would have several of those above here. And then at the bottom, you would have 
something like this, which is going to be a catch-all to just block or blacklist all of the other sites that were not defined on the whitelist above. But if I had this out of order, for example, if I had line seven up here on like line one, then any of these other allow rules that I put below it would just get ignored because there's already a deny all that's defined above. So anything below it that conflicts with it is just going to get ignored. So this would be an example of a network-based firewall, something that would be defined usually inside of the router. Most routers these days have a firewall aspect that is just built into them. And usually those are the firewalls that look more similar to this. But there are also host-based firewalls which run on each host or each end user computer in the network. And you typically only see these host-based firewalls on Windows computers. Um, they could be enabled on Unix and Linux systems as well, but firewalls on those type of systems are usually not necessary. And the reason being because f uh, Linux and Unix systems, they just don't open any ports on your system by default without user intervention. Linux distros, they also don't start any services that listen to incoming requests by default. But with Windows, on the other hand, there is a lot of software that's running that is creating network connections on your machine automatically without your intervention. And you can see most of these connections by running a netstat-a from a command prompt or a get TCP connection in get net TCP connection in PowerShell. And as you can see from the screenshot here, there are several connections to many remote addresses over different ports that are going on. So thus the need for a host based firewall. Also, the firewalls that are running on a host, they're usually a bit more sophisticated than the basic ones that run on the entire network. These firewalls that come bundled with antivirus usually have a next generation firewall component which is built into them. And what that'll do, instead of just looking at the IP and the port that a packet is coming from, the firewall would actually do a deeper inspection of the packet up to the application layer to see what it is that this IP packet actually does. And these could be implemented on the network as well. However, due to the increased complexity, this is often going to be a standalone appliance. It's not going to be implemented in software and built into a router like the other firewall that we looked at. And there's also a chance that with these advanced firewalls, if they're implemented on the network, they could cause a bottleneck in your network connection since they're using more compute power and more compute cycles with this deep packet inspection instead of just looking at what IP is coming from and what port it's being traversed over. And that's why the next gen firewalls, especially the ones that don't cause too many bottlenecks, are usually just used in enterprises. Unless you really want them, you would have to pay that enterprise price tag that comes along with it. So now you know what firewalls are all about. Hope you enjoyed the video.